Good morning, everybody. It's Cliff here with Good to Go with Cliff. Yesterday, there was a tragic accident here at my home. There was a single vehicle accident along the roadside. We have a couple of acres, and it's all fronted by County Road, and it runs from east to west. At the westernmost edge of our property, there's a 90-degree curve. Someone was heading from the small town up the road a ways, and coming around that curve, unfortunately, they came around that curve at high speed, about 70 miles an hour, according to the reports, lost control, and impacted a tree and tragically that person lost their life when that event happened we were home we did hear a thud but at the time i couldn't place what it was i thought something had just fallen and impacted the side of the house because at the time we've been babysitting our three-year-old granddaughter and 11 month old grandson i thought that perhaps they'd knocked something over that it hit the side of the house hit a wall or something and so I went to check on them and make sure that they were okay. And because I have lumber stacked beside the house and other implements, I thought maybe something just got knocked down. I had no idea it was an accident until I heard the sirens from police and fire responding. Sadly, the lady who was driving the vehicle impacted at speeds so high that she did lose her life. And it's tragic because that's somebody's daughter, that's somebody's wife or mother. I still don't know the exact identity, but I'll refer to her as a neighbor because she probably was a neighbor of mine, although I didn't recognize the vehicle. So as we observed what happened and watched the response from a standoff distance, you know, throughout the course of the day and last night, there were a lot of thoughts that came to mind about what's important in life and losing people who are close to you. The whole event caused me to think about what's really important because let's face it, life is fleeting. We can't make more time. And so I wanted to share a few things with you today. Consider them cliff notes on life. Why I retired early. Why I think there's some urgency around that. Why I think it's an opportunity really for us to invest in the lives of the people most important to us and to be present and to be deliberate and intentional about the relationships that really matter. So I'm, I'm turning 57 this month and I've been retired now for 11 months going on one year. And thinking about the things that are important in life have been at the center of my thoughts for the past several years, but in so many ways, it's our perspective that drives our decision-making. It's our perspective that shapes whether we're happy or not in life day to day. It shapes how we experience tragedy and loss. People can go through the exact same experience and one person can come through it feeling fine and another person can be shaken to their core their life changed forever. We respond very differently to circumstances and tragedies. But it was a change in my perspective, personally, that led me to choose an earlier than usual retirement. I retired at the age of 56. Most people in America are putting off retirement until age 62, 65, or beyond. I chose to retire at age 56, and I count my blessings for having been able to do that. But it was my perspective on life and career and things, the material things of life that led me to make the decision that I made. I'd like to discuss that here today because I think it's relevant. Having just lost a neighbor, I think it's relevant because as we go throughout our lives, just day to day, we can forget how precious each day is how precious the time that we have is and not assign the value to it that it deserves, the importance that it deserves. And so it was my desire to reclaim my time from career and work and job life and be able to apply that to the things and people that matter most to me. And that's why I retired early. We may not realize it, but I think that there are a lot of traps in life. And what I mean by traps is there are myths. There's a myth that the most critical thing to focus on as a young person is getting the most education. 
regardless of the cost, getting a job regardless of the cost, getting into a house no matter what the cost. So way back when I worked for the state of California, I would meet in the Capitol with a lot of different groups and organizations. One group that came to visit us one day was a group of students who were attending University of California at Irvine. And it was one of the most expensive institutions in one of the most expensive zip codes to live in, in the state of California. And what they wanted to talk to me about were the challenges that students were facing over food scarcity. They were expressing that the California state budget and taxpayers needed to allocate more money for students because they were experiencing food scarcity. So I asked them some basic questions. I asked them if they understood what the number one cost driver was for a college education. Not one of them could answer that. And it was school choice. I explained to them, if you're experiencing food scarcity, if you're experiencing hardship because of the costs of attending the institution you're attending, if you're assuming all kinds of student loan debt because of the choice of school that you made, make a different choice. You can save tons of money attending a school in another area where the costs of living are much lower. Because in the end, when you get into your career path, the vast majority of people aren't going to care what school you graduated from. Students who graduate with tons of debt are at a huge disadvantage because they bought into the myth that you have to have a degree from a particular institution and the only way to get there is through taking on substantial debt. And that's just not the case. You absolutely can get through college without student debt. It's a choice. And to think otherwise is just a myth. The other myth, get a good job that you love, that fulfills you. Well, how about getting a good job that's going to compensate you adequately to meet your goals? There are people who graduate with degrees that have no application in the modern workforce, that they're just cranking out people with degrees that aren't even qualified to work at Starbucks. That's a huge disservice, particularly given the fact that those people end up with a ton of debt. I can't tell you how many times I've heard people who graduate from a degree program, for example, someone graduates from a degree program in social work, goes to work in the field, knowing full well that the compensation rate for social workers means that they're gonna struggle. They're gonna struggle to afford a home. They're gonna struggle to meet the demands of this economy. That's terrible, but it was also a choice. Speaking of traps, there's also the career trap. People get trapped into careers because of their pursuit of things. So they are drowning in debt, student loan debt, mortgage debt, and debt for loans on cars that they can't really afford. I'll give you an example. I once had a colleague I served with in the Army Reserve. We were both captains. We were both company commanders at the time. She is an outstanding person, but we made very different decisions. And I remember on the occasion of her 20th anniversary in the Army, she purchased a Rolex watch for her. She was very proud of her new Rolex watch, celebrating her 20th anniversary in the Army Reserve. We all decided to go out to lunch, which was very common, and we piled into her Lexus. It was a beautiful car and we drove to lunch and on our way there she began voicing concerns. She observed a homeless guy who was panhandling and she made some observations about him and how sad that was and how upside down our society was and how, how terrible it was now that a family can't get by on just one income that uh, she would prefer to not have to hold down a career. But because of the current circumstances in our economy, she was forced to work. And I said, hold on, time out, time out. We each make choices in our lives. You have made a choice to wear a Rolex watch. I, I wear a Timex Ironman. You've made a choice to drive a Lexus luxury car. You've made a choice to live in the most expensive zip code in Sacramento County. And that's fine. You have the liberty to make those choices, but those were yours to make. I, on the other hand, drive a Plymouth Breeze at the time. It wasn't something you'd brag about, but it did the job. I drove an hour and 20 minutes each way to work. 
commuting from a zip code where I could afford to buy the home and keep my wife home to raise our sons. That was the choice that we made. And as far as buying a home and home ownership, I can't tell you how many people that I know personally who are house poor. They were able to purchase a home that they really couldn't afford. That's a mistake. You should attend a school that you can afford. They should avoid student debt. Instead, they should work all summer, pursue scholarships, any number of ways to avoid taking student loans. And when it comes time to buy a house, buy a modest home, buy a modest car. We've become too swept up in commercialism. It's interesting when you travel to old neighborhoods, you see that the size of homes used to be substantially smaller 30, 40, 50 years ago. So you see homes that were under a thousand square feet. 100% of the time, unless you were wealthy, you lived in a modest home that met your needs. Somewhere along the line, our society went off track. Having a massive home that you can't afford to store more stuff that you don't need, well, that's a bad plan. And that's not going to set you up for success to retire early. There's so many people in our consumer society who are swept up with commercialism and keeping up with the Jones. I really think that social media has impacted us in a way to cause young people to absolutely believe that they have to have the latest gadget. You have to have the newest, latest phone. You need to drive a high-end car. And that was just never the case growing up. Keeping up with the Joneses has always been a thing, but now today, I feel like it's out of control and it's robbing people of their ability to live a life with dignity and without debt. Our materialistic worldview has left us in a place where we're buying bigger and bigger homes to store our stuff. We're buying stuff and buying things that we don't need with money we don't have to impress people we don't even like. As we accrue more and more stuff, people are buying storage units and paying for storage on a monthly basis to store stuff that they no longer use they no longer need in their lives, and in many cases have forgotten entirely about. I know some people who have one, two, and three storage units. How useful is that? So I want to take a minute to talk about my decision to retire early. As I said earlier, a tragic accident took the life of someone that I didn't know, but someone who was a neighbor. I think that that's terrible, but it reaffirms how precious and how fleeting life is. It does to me. You know, in gearing up for my early retirement, probably around age 30, I started looking ahead and looking down the road. And I realized that the years between 55 and 65 are absolutely critical, in my opinion. After age 65, health declines. And so our ability to experience everything that life has to offer and to be as as vigorous and engaged physically and mentally as we possibly can be is important to me. And I looked at those years, if I'm blessed enough to have all of those years, I want to use them and apply them in investing in the lives of the people who are most important to me being a present grandfather, being an engaged and present father. And so those are the primary things that drove my decision making. You know, I served almost 30 years in the military and I had a lot of great experiences. And I also had a lot of very difficult experiences. You know, a lot of us experience death close up and to be present as young people died as a result of combat action. You know, those are things that I, I don't love to talk about. I don't go out of my way really to share those things, but I wanna be open with you about the things that changed my perspective. And I realized having gone through that, that when that was occurring, when I was around someone who was dying, those people never said, man, I wish I'd spent just uh, another day or week at work. I wish I'd gotten that project across the finish line. No, all they wanted was another day. They wanted, they, they wish they had more time. They thought about their families. And so having gone through that, having been in circumstances where people died, having been in circumstances where there was carnage, 
impacted me in a lot of different ways, but one of the significant ways was that I came away from it with a new appreciation for living the life that I've been given. Living well, living a high quality life, being engaged in a meaningful way, serving and uplifting my family and others is a blessing and opportunity that I've been extended. And I want to use the time that I've been given to do that and to make a difference in the world around me if I can. That's my goal. And I want to be intentional about it. Intentional with the time that I have it is precious. I happen to think that it is for all of us. And maybe maybe you share that perspective, maybe you don't. It's okay. We all have the freedom of having our own opinions, but I think time's precious. And for better or worse, I think that we are all responsible for the creation of the financial chains, the shackles that rob us of freedom. Because if you're in your 40s and 50s with substantial debt, you're going to have a real challenge on your hands. It can still be done, but you have to be very serious about getting out of debt and making decisions that lead you towards financial freedom and the ability and the option to retire. Ideally, early on my decision to retire early, I've talked about my experience with death and people passing. Life is fleeting. Life is precious. The question is, are you living life or are you just enduring it? If you're chained to a desk, if you're chained to debt, if you're chained to a mortgage that you can't afford, if you're chained to a truck or car payment that's just crushing you, you have to ask yourself the honest question, am I living life or am I just enduring it? And are those past decisions robbing me of opportunities to live a different life at 54, 55 in those critical years between 55 and 60? Am I robbing myself? of options. And I think that those are questions that we all have to ask. And it's best if you ask those earlier in your financial life. Now, we've always tried to live within our means. We've driven used cars, have on rare occasion purchased a new car. That's not what we drive now. We live in what I would consider a modest home, but we're comfortable. And none of those decisions stand in the way of my early retirement and enjoying my early retirement. And right now I'm encouraging my bride to join me in early retirement. And that's a decision that she'll have to make. I love my life in retirement and the freedom that it brings. I'm not on the hook to be responsive to an employer's expectations or job or production expectations. I get to get up every morning and set my own agenda. And I don't have a schedule that I keep that's rigorous. I have a routine that works very well for me. And most importantly, I've been able to be lifted from a very stressful work-life scenario, far less stressful, where I set the agenda, I set the priorities of work. I still have plenty of chores to do around the place, but I do them in my own time. I set the schedule and that works great for me. You know, in my previous life in the nine to five hustle, I commuted an hour and 20 minutes each way to the state capitol for 26 years. I was always on the run, always on the go, working hard, being committed. And I, I think everyone should work hard, should be committed, but now I live a very different life. In the past, I had to prioritize the needs of others, whether it was my boss, my career, or things going on at the job, always hustling to take care of others and their priorities. Now I get to focus on my family, our priorities, whether it's health and fitness or taking care of projects that are priorities for us here in our home life. So I focus on health, fitness, life structure, organization, and personal development. I get to read whatever I want, whenever I want. I've always enjoyed reading, but haven't always had the time when I was working. Now, I'm not claiming to know everything, and I certainly don't have all the answers, but I know the things that I've experienced and what works for me, what brings me happiness, what makes me calm, and brings me less stress I'm just a guy who wants to live my life as fully as I can without worrying about the opinions or expectations of others. 
and the demands that they would place on me and my family. I love living a life where I have no debt. I'm indebted to no one except my Savior and Creator and living a life that I love and trying to live my best life. And I'm doubly blessed to be able to share my life and my experiences, my observations here on this YouTube platform on my channel. People contact me, they reach out, they share their stories. It's opened up a whole world of relationships and experiences and connections that I really appreciate. We're approaching 5,000 subscribers. I plan on continuing to grow this channel, to invest time, energy, and effort into it, and to bring value to people who join me. So I hope that as you review this video and consider your own life and your expectations, what you're looking to get out of your retirement or your life, I hope that you'll ask yourself the same question. Are you living life or just enduring it? What's your trajectory? Are you on track? And if not, are you able to make the necessary changes to be able to get rid of the shackles of debt and other bad decisions that may rob you of opportunities? People have a lot of fears around making major decisions like retiring, but I would just suggest that if you can retire, retire early. If you can put it together, retire early if you can. Some people have a lot of fears about this stage in their life. They have feelings about their jobs or their careers as if that's what defines us. And folks, it's not. It's our relationships, our connections, the people that matter most to us that matter most. And I know that we're all hardwired to want certainty. We all want stability and safety. But the fact is, most of the important decisions we make in life require some calculated risk. If you're waiting to make a major life transition until everything's perfect, let me tell you something, it'll never be perfect. There's never going to be a time when all of the ducks are in a row. Some things you'll have to take on faith. That doesn't mean you make wild decisions without preparation and a lot of study. But if you can retire early, it's worth it. And if you're concerned out of loyalty that your employer is going to struggle, the organization is going to suffer without you, let me explain to you, they're not. We're all replaceable. Rest assured, they will have you replaced within two weeks. Don't let that become an impediment for you if you're at the stage where you can seriously consider early retirement. It's great to be loyal. Be loyal, but not at your expense. Remember this, the job, the career, that's not who you are. It doesn't define you. Certainly didn't define me, and there is so much more to life than the nine to five. Again, I just want to reiterate, life is precious. We only have so much time and we can't make more. My heart goes out to the family of the lady who was lost in the accident yesterday. But again, it just underscores we need to get on with living and living the highest quality of lives we possibly can. I hope that you'll be able to join me in early retirement. It is great and it can be done. The American dream is still possible. We just have to make better decisions and we have to encourage one another to make better decisions so that we're not creating our own shackles and we are not robbing ourselves of the option of living our best life. Thank you for being here with me and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.